With the insulation all in, we can go ahead and drywall the entire inside of the living area. First, we used the drywall lift and got all the sheets on the ceiling. If you can get 12 foot sheets, you will have fewer seams to mud. In video 9, you saw how we screw the drywall sheet to the sill plate but don't have it touching the concrete. I used little pieces of wood for that. The step that takes a long time when installing the drywall is cutting out the holes for the lights and the outlets. Measure twice, cut once. Don't worry about making cutouts for doorways and windows because it's a lot easier to come back and use the drywall saw to cut those pieces off. Using these drywall drills is a lifesaver because you can get the screw to the right depth without tearing the paper. I even bought some of these dimplers to put in another drill so more than one person could work at a time. We used the sticky mesh tape for seams and it was very easy. After we got all the tape on, some of us covered seams and others covered screw holes. Getting the seams looking good and the screw holes flush takes some practice. I used pre-mixed mud because I didn't want to mess with getting the correct consistency on my own. Remember, the less you put on, the less you have to sand later, and you'd be surprised how long it takes to sand a little ridge of mud that has dried. We sanded way too much in the bathroom. Remember to use this kind of wallboard in the bathroom, which is specifically made for areas where there will be moisture. Once you have the sanding done, it's ready for painting. Clean up at the end of every day because it feels a lot better to start at a clean work site the next morning. 